Hello, welcome to Programming and Engineering 101. This is going to be a six-part series. Uh, we may have talked about some of this stuff in class. Uh, you can use this for review, or if this is your first time through, um, enjoy. Hey, I'll be switching between PowerPoint and a couple other programs. You may see me adjust the screen from time to time. Um, stick with me. All right, here we go. Let's move on. I'd like you to start by writing down your initial thoughts just anything that comes to mind about engineering or building and improving something. Um, think about a time where you may have built or constructed something or written something for the first time or made something for a, a class or a project that you have done. Go ahead and take about five minutes to do that in your notes. Go ahead and pause the video and then start it back up when you're done. Alright, welcome back and moving right along here. All right, so in the past we've talked about the writing process, and in your classes you may have talked about the writing process. In your language arts class you may have talked about or may be talking about the writing process. Um, in the writing process there are a series of five steps. One is the pre-write. This is where you kind of organize your thoughts and um, kind of think about what are you going to write, what are you going to write about. Um, and kind of take your topic and put together what it is, kind of organize what's the first paragraph or the first topic, first sentence you're going to do. Um, what is the first theme you're going to attack. Um, and then from there you put together a rough draft. You put together your sloppy copy is another term I've heard for it. Um, you write that out and then you go through revise and edit. You proofread it. You take a look at what it is what errors can you find, what things do you need to do to make it better. And then you do a peer review where you look at having somebody else look at your work and give you feedback. Is it on topic? Is it got a good theme? Does it flow? What So on and so forth. And then you have your final draft and you publish what you've written or hand it in. Um, we're going to be talking and using the engineering process. And we've talked a little bit about the engineering process, but it goes something a little bit like this. You start off by IDing the problem or need, um, ID, IDing a problem or a need, and review the specs. You look at researching current solutions. Are there any to start with? Um, or do you need to start from scratch? Um, do these solutions work to help solve or fix the problem that you have or the need that has arisen? Um, are there improvements that need to be made? Are there changes that need to be made? So then you move into redesigning the current process um, or current solution or create a new one. Um, this could be where you take a solution and add, uh, for example, we have a door that is push or pull and you notice that the problem is people are having problems pulling it open, so you add a door handle. Or we have a um, you have a pencil, but you continually have to go back to the sharpener to sharpen your pencil. So we have what are called engineering pencils, or ones that click and slide lead out. Um, then you go ahead and test your solution, and you review or rework the solution. You meet, does it meet what the person that gave you the problem or the specs, does it meet those specs? Does it actually work? And does it solve the problem? Does it meet the need of the individual? And then once you've done that, you implement or publish your solution. And those are the steps in the engineering process. Okay. Um, from here, we're going to break these down into some individual steps. In the next, we move into research and development. This is where companies and people put a lot of money. And it's probably the hardest part in the engineering process or problem solving is you want what's called R&D. It's the most import, important part of engineering. Um, does your problem, are you meeting the needs of the customer? Are you de it's where you design and develop new things. Think of cell phones or iPhones. The iPhone was really big and bulky um, when it first came out. Now it's gotten smaller and smaller and smaller and now it's starting to get bigger again. Um, this is where you can use your imagination and it's often where you get to help others. The research part of this, um, you're understanding the specs, you're looking at what's already out there, what are people trying, what are people doing. Um, the design part of this is where you look at improving what you've looked at, designing something completely new, you make it your own, you make your own solution. Research, you can oftentimes use the internet, you can use surveys, um, you use data in design, you're using drawing programs or rough drafts or um, blueprints, those kind of things. Um, so, moving right along, next slide we're going to talk about how the engineering process melds into or kind of goes with the writing process. So here we have a slide, we start off with the pre-write. 
This is where we're IDing the problem and understanding the specs. What is it that our solution needs to have? What are the must-haves? From there, we move into a rough draft. We research current solutions. We develop and design a new solution. We put together a prototype or a um, mock-up. We um, build a. We build our robot. We test different solutions or different parts to it. And then we move into the revise and edit where we're changing things. We test our current solution. Does it work? Does it meet the needs? Um, what changes need to be made? Um, what modifications do we have to do? And then once we've gone through this, and a lot of time is spent in here. You'll hear the term, you may hear the term beta testing in software. That's where they've kind of got their prototype. They think it's ready to go to market and they actually throw it out with people, actual people to use it and encourage them to quote break it. Um, and then from the beta test they move into publishing and implementing. This is where we move forward and get it out there and sell it and give it to people and let them move with it. Okay. From there, this is kind of how the process works. You can use books, web, or others, um, there be other students, to talk about and research and find out what's already out there. Once you finish your research, then you go into the design part of things and you use your brain, paper, or CAD program like Lego Digital Designer, put it together and you implement or put out your product. Okay. Some vocabulary that you need to be aware of um, and is a frame. When you're building your robot, what is a frame? support for a vehicle and it distributes the weight. You have an axle. It's a long cross or plus, sh plus shaped piece used to connect wheels and gears to motors. You have connector pegs that we're going to be using in the Lego world and they're used to connect beams together. There are several different types of connector pegs. You have the Lego brick. Oftentimes I refer to it as the brain of the robot. Um, this is It converts the code that you write into the actions and movements and stuff of the robot. You have a Technic beam. This is a smooth beam on one side and it has holes on the other. It's kind of the um, hold you can build frames and stuff out of it. And then its companion, a studded beam. This is more kind of close to the more traditional type of Legos with raised holes, um, bumps on one side, but also has holes in the side that you can use connector pegs to, com to make with. Um, you can use these to make frames or uh, like a bulldozer attachment or something like that. You have joints. These are used to kind of go around corners. Um, you'll see pictures of these um, as you're working on illustrating your vocabulary. You have a data cable. This connects motors and sensors to your brick or your brain and it transfers signals, electronic impulses, signals to that sensor or that motor and makes it move or pulls in data from the sensor. You have what I call the download or the USB cable. This connects to your computer and it connects the brick to the computer. It's what you download the code onto the brick with. Um, you have what is a wheel. Sometimes people refer to these as rims on cars. It's what the rubber part of the tire connects to. Um, and it's usually the part that connects to the axle. You have a tire, which is the rubber part or the um, part that actually connects to the road. It fits over the, ac over the wheel. And then we have gears. That is a circular piece. Um, it has teeth and it's used to help gain power or speed. Probably not going to do much with gears, but those are the vocabulary terms you're going to hear me use. Okay. When you're building with LEGO, it's important that you have patience. Not everything goes as planned. You need to look at your instructions. You need to make sure that you're counting the holes. LEGO measures using a hole technique. Um, they also call them modules. Make sure you're following the instructions. Um, don't force the pieces. Don't try to um, bend them or force them into a way you want them to go. They should go together somewhat naturally. You may need to push a little bit if you're snapping things together using connector pegs, um, but it, you shouldn't have to force anything with any degree of force. If you are, you're, you feel like you're having to force something, please let me know. Um, you should have symmetry. One side should look like the other side. Um, if one side has more pieces, then you may have done something wrong. Um, and there should be no, you sh you're, should be sturdy, it should be solidly built. Um, you shouldn't have any wobble or leaning to one side or something like that. This is something that you can do with your partners and have them kind of check things out. Okay. We're going to be building this piece right here. It's called the Express Bot. You're going to be searching for some instructions here. We're not going to be adding in the Lego Lego person. Um, but you're going to have something that looks something similar to this.
there's an inherent or a problem with this design that you are going to have to solve once you find the instructions. So the specs, the things that I'm going to require you to have is it needs to be sturdy. It needs to have at least three wheels and two tires. It can have more, but it needs to have at least these three wheels and two tires. Um, it can't have any more than four wheels. Um, and you need to have it needs to have a name, which we'll talk about in a later video. Um, it can be it has to be these sizes. It has to fit in this kind of a um, box or cube. You need to have instructions saved on your computer, and you're going to only have one week to build it. So um, once you're done watching this video, you can go ahead and get started. All right. Um, as you're doing this, you're going to be working with partners in your group, on, on your teams. Each there will be two people per team. Um, once you have and found the directions saved and or shared with your partner, you can go ahead and start building. Um, each partner, you'll have one kit, which will be a box. Make sure you write down in your notes your kit number um, and you know, brainstorm a name that you want to use for your robot. It's important with this kit, kit number, this is going to be how we identify and find your kit if it gets lost. Um, you can start building. Make sure you write the kit number on the brick. Um, you should get that. That'll be on the side of your box. It'll help you find things later on or if your bot gets misplaced we can make sure we get it back to the rightful owner. Okay. Um, from here you'll want to make sure that you're revising and editing your robot. You'll see that there is a problem. Um, does your bot meet the specs? Did you add something on there that makes it come outside of that cube? Is it symmetrical? Okay. Is it stable or is it instable? Um, do the wheels not match? Do they not line up? Do they not look the same or do you have two different wheels on there? Um, what are their oddities? Does it lean back in one way or does it lean too far forward? Are your pieces, do you have pieces that don't work? Um, like you have axles that don't match up. Are you missing anything that you think you may need. Um, please make sure you write these problems down in your notes and brainstorm with your partner potential solutions. You may use LEGO Digital Designer to design a solution or put together a solution for that. Um, once you, you know, and you know, try it out. Put it together, build it, and see if it works. Okay. Um, from here, charging. Make sure you remove the battery. Write the kit number on the battery so you can find it later and then plug the battery into the charging station at the end of the table. Okay. With that, uh, once you're done watching this video, and you may have been working on building during this time, I want you to write down something new that you learned about engineering. I um, also want to know something you, you think you or you already knew, but you now see differently. What, what is something you, you thought you knew or you knew, but you see differently? And I'd also like you to document in your notes what you need what more do you need to know what is what are you still curious about or what wasn't covered during this during this task we'll be talking about these questions later on you'll be talking with them as your, with your um, table teams and you'll also be um, sharing them with me um, to help me kind of make sure that you've got everything that you need to know all right